So what is going on everyone, welcome back to the channel and today I wanted to go over some of my favorite settings within Ghost Recon Breakpoint to really improve the tactical aspect of it. Stuff like removing your HUD or bumping the difficulty are really important, but the game actually gives you a ton more options, which I felt will be a good idea to delve deep in today, especially since Operation Motherland is around the corner and with that I think we can expect a lot of people returning to the game. But before we do this, the guys over at Dragon City were kind enough to sponsor today's video. Now what is Dragon City all about? Well, it's a free-to-play mobile game available on both Android and iOS. It is obviously related to dragons and in here you can collect over a thousand different ones and build your own little dragon empire. If you breed two different dragons, you can get a new one for which you will have to hatch and feed in order for it to evolve. After that, you can train them and take them to battle in order to make them more powerful. And you can do so in the many different PvP modes to let you fight against your friends or challenge other dragon masters. Oh, and by the way, if you click the link in the description within the next 7 days, you can even get a special reward for free. Dragon CD is free to download, you can also do it by hitting the link down in the description. Big thanks to Dragon CD for sponsoring today's video, but with that said, let's move on with the settings. Now starting with probably the most important thing you want to turn off is the drone presence in the islands. To my surprise, there were a ton of people that still didn't know you could actually turn them off. Now if you add over to world parameters, you will be able to turn off drone presence, Israel and helicopter patrol frequency, and I usually keep the heli patrols on, I feel like they add just that little bit of dynamic to the game, but other than that, I turn everything off. Now you will notice that you can only toggle the drone presence to reduced and not 100% off, so you will see some drones here and there, but they will only appear in plot related missions. So if you do a side mission where the goal is to take down a drone, then in that case the drones will still be there. What I do to counter this is to simply don't play those missions. That's mostly the entire reason behind the fact that I still haven't finished the main story, because I really, really don't like the drones. In the world parameters you can also toggle some past live events such as the Terminator, the Resistance and the Ember Sky events. Now I usually always have these off, especially the Terminator one, but they are still pretty good. The Ember Sky one covers some of the parts of the island with a toxic gas, so it forces you to use a gas mask and switch filters while you are on the toxic areas. This one is cool and I might toggle it on when I see fit. But the best one is definitely the resistance live event as it really adds some life to the island. We are probably not going to need this one after Operation Motherland, but until then this is still a good option to turn on. Now moving on to the ghost experience, you can select whether you want to play with gear score on or off. For me personally, I play with it off and the reason why I do this is because in immersive mode, every weapon has its own strengths and weaknesses. Sure, you can still upgrade them with spare parts, but it really doesn't make much of a difference. With gear score, you constantly need to loot new weapons and equipping those weapons you find to improve your gear score. And this pretty much turns Breakpoint into a looter shooter, which I really, really did not appreciate it. Whether you want this on or off, I think it's up to you, uh, but for me, I usually keep it off. Now I will say this, if you have a low gear score weapon and gear and go into high level bases, you will absolutely get crushed, so it might be a good way to bump that difficulty into an even higher level, but then you have to deal with having a low gear score weapon which might take like 10 shots to kill a guy, so not at all realistic. Now moving on to the difficulty, and there is no surprise here, I play on extreme mode. Uh, the reason behind it is that because while on extreme mode, the damage values actually make sense. You get one-shotted by a sniper rifle or by a shotgun, you know, the, the regular assault rifle isn't going to take more than two or three shots to kill you. And it also improves the AI response times and how fast they can spawn to you, so it really forces you to play tactically, to do your recons, you know, to pretty much use your head and take your time. As it really is impossible to just go and gun is blazing and expect to survive a big firefight. This is where sniping from afar really shines, especially when you are like hiding in a bush somewhere and have sentinel right around the corner and they are looking for you because you shot one of them and even though they don't see you, they know the shot came from that general direction. Stakes really become higher because you know that if they spot you, then you are most likely going to die. Now as far as tactical option goes, there are a ton of them and in here is where you can actually really like dial in your preferences and really play the game the way you want it to be played. You can choose how many main weapons you bring, for which I only choose one, and I feel like this is a really important option to tone down as it gives some tanking to the player. You can't just pick an SMG and a sniper rifle and be good for every single situation, you know? When you only have one option turned on, you can only choose one, so it really makes you think, you know, do I really want to bring this SMG? I mean, sure, it's going to be good for CQB, but the base I'm going to, it's pretty big, and I might have to deal with some longer range targets. 
I think the game in its launch state really took the guesswork out of the player and options like this is what puts the guesswork back in the table. Now after that we have bandage quantity and I usually just pick the option few, uh, this one gives you 3 bandages and depending on your injury rate I think it's more than enough. In the option syringes heal injuries I just turn that off, the reason I do that is because if I turn this on then there will be no point in bringing bandages with me. Now after that we have risk of injury and for this one I always choose rare, now the reason why I choose rare instead of often or always is because getting injured and having to use a bandage is really cool for a while. And stop being that cool when every time you get shot you have to stop what you're doing and apply a bandage. Again it's a tin balance but for me I have it on rare. It's a good gameplay mechanic but it can easily overtake your gameplay if you're not careful. Now stamina consumption I have it on off, now this is definitely a little bit unrealistic, you will definitely not be able to sprint for that long, especially wearing combat gear and holding a weapon, but I pretty much never sprint anyway since I don't really like the animation and when I do need to go from one place to another I usually just drive around or use the helicopters. Health regen I have it on none, so in this setting your health won't go back unless you bandage or use syringes. It's another one of those situations where if you have this turned on then it kinda makes the syringes useless to begin with. Right then, ammo loss on reload and this is a big guess for me. Now with ammo loss on reload on, you will lose all of your ammunition that is still left in the magazine after you reload. So let's say you have a fresh new mag in, you take a couple shots and reload, you know, Call of Duty style. If you have this one on, all the ammo that was left in that magazine is going to waste. This is like a basic tactical shooter mechanic that I was very glad to see introduced to Breakpoint as well. Now after that we have my favorite option and something I really wanted for months and that is the Darkest Night mode. So what Darkest Night mode does is that it really lowers the brightness of the game during the night, to the point that you cannot see anything unless you put your nods on. I love this option, I was super happy with it and I think it was a great addition to the game. This one really makes the night vision useful because before that the night will be way too bright in order for you to use them. Now after after that we have the teammate options with let's just choose whether we want teammate special abilities or not, I just turn this off and I do the same thing with the sync shot weapon display. If you have this one on then your teammates will constantly carry around two primary weapons with them at all times and that kinda breaks immersion for you when you are only rocking one, so for the sake of symmetry I have it off. Now after this we have the bivouac options, now the bivouacs pretty much work as a safe house like in Far Cry games. In here you can sleep, recover, heal your injuries, choose different classes, so on and so forth. What you can also do is to buy more ammo, meds, supplies, weapons and even spawn in vehicles. Now Ghost Recon Breakpoint came out with a big emphasis on the survival aspect, and while that couldn't be further from the truth, but if you lock the ability to shop items and use your garage it really does make a difference. With both of these options turned off, you cannot spawn in vehicles and you can't buy anything either unless you go back to everyone which is the main base. For roleplay purposes I think these are good options to turn off, with them off you really gotta be more mindful of the supplies you have with you and it really gives some meaning to crafting different recipes. So like syringes, bandages, etc, etc. You also won't be able to spawn a vehicle, so you can't just spawn an helicopter and go wherever you want, you actually have to like infiltrate the base and get it for yourself, so it also gives more meaning to those vehicles since they aren't just a click away from getting a new one. Now one more thing I want to mention is that the bullet drop mechanic in Ghost Recon Breakpoint is pretty much broken, you know some weapons have tons of range and can get up to 600 meters and then others they just drop straight down in the 200 meter mark. Mark. You can't really fix this 100%, I think it's a bug, uh, but there is a perk called Ballistic Advantage that gives you plus 60 range, I don't really know what they mean with plus 60 but it does help with sniping. Anyway guys those are my settings, that's pretty much how I play the game most of the time and you know if you played Breakpoint at launch and didn't like it or definitely say come back, try my settings and let me know how it went as it really fixed most of the things that we didn't like about it. But with that said that's going to be it for today guys, until the next time have a good one and I'll see you all on the next one. Kesser Play signing out.